Hello, everyone. I'm Anthe Frangiatis from The Drawing Room in historic downtown New Bedford. And I'm joined today with one of my favorite artists, Jackie Reeves of Barnstable, Mass. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Anthe. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Thanks for joining us today. I wanted to take the opportunity to have this conversation so that we can learn a little bit more about your work and some of the work that we currently have available at the drawing room. I have been secretly following your career for many years, as I've shared with you in the past, and I'm thrilled uh, to have your work available now for others to enjoy. Well, thank you for having my work. I really appreciate that. And it's really nice to hear that you've been following my work for so long. So you've seen how it's evolved and changed. Yes, I remember actually the first body of work that I saw of yours probably 15 years ago now was your underwater swimmers. Ah. Or were your, and as you've mentioned to me in the past, it was a short lived series. Um, yeah, but one, it was. That, one that I've always kicked myself for not purchasing. I have one left. You have to come to my oh. studio. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize that. So you are at the studio now, correct? I am. This is my studio behind me. I'm um, in Barnstable Village right now. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about the name of the studio, Chalkboard Studio? Chalkboard Studio, up? yeah. So um, I, when I first moved here about 15 years ago uh, into this space, I was with two other artists, Richard Neal and Jamie Wolf. Mm -hmm. who I had met at Katuit Center for the Arts. And um, we wanted to come up with a name for our little our studio within the building, because we're in a building called the Old Schoolhouse. Um, and it's the original schoolhouse for Barnstable Village. Mm -hmm. uh, so we thought that Chalkboard Studio would be a good name, given that this used to be the school in the 1850s through till the 1970s. Mm -hmm. um, and we just liked the, the reference of chalkboard to drawing. And um, that's how it came. That's how we, the three of us came up with the name Chalkboard Studio. And it has stuck, uh, even though the three of us are now in separate studios in the building. Um, we still call ourselves a Chalkboard Studio. You have been working as an artist for many years. How, how has your process changed over time? Or wh what are you doing now that you weren't? Doing before. Yeah, I would say because like, I, I feel like I have sort of two lives as an artist. You know, when I first started my career, I was I would call myself a commercial artist where I would, you know, work with clients. And then I was more of a designer. That was my training was as a designer. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a shift where instead of um, instead of working for a client, you know, now suddenly I was just creating work for myself without any client. And that that's when my process really changed because prior to that, I was doing it more, approaching it more as a designer, like, here's the problem. Okay. I'm going to do sketches. I'm going to plan it. I'm going to get it approved. And then once it's approved, then I'm going to make it. And so suddenly when I found myself having to just, or just making work where it's just for me, I didn't know what to make. I mean, I was a little lost and I'm like, I don't even know ooh, what do I want to make? And at first I, I approached it the way that I did as a designer. I did sketches and I tried things out and, and then made it big. But then I just found myself wanting to explore and discover, make new discoveries. So I started getting into abstraction. Um, it took some pushing to get me there, but um, I, and actually the, the underwater series that you liked uh -huh. was my little baby step towards that because with the abstraction that you get from photography underwater, yes. it may, you know how it makes the water looks, everything looks abstract. It's not a real thing yeah, anymore. The light refracting on You know, water. someone's feet in the water, you see the feet, but then it, it gets all wonky and strange. And so I was doing that copying photographs, but in that process, suddenly it opened up into a realm of abstraction that I thought was really interesting. And that kind of became like my, you know, the stepping stone that led me into working abstractly. So now I find I, um, that and a whole bunch of other things. I went back to school and, um, you know, decided to study art history in more depth than I had since college because I had a, you know, 20 year, 25 year gap from being an undergrad and I went back for grad school and that kind of opened me up too. I was like, Oh, there's 
whole world of art that I haven't really kind of been paying attention to. And um, so by playing with marks and abstraction, it kind of tapped into a whole, a whole different level of um, my subconscious, you know, it was like just splattering and scribbling and not making a plan, just basically jump into something by just getting excited about the materials. I didn't think about what I was going to make, what it meant, what it looked like, just had fun with materials. Um, and that has kind of been the way I work to this day. I, I still do that because for me, it's um, it just opens me up to more possibility. Some of the reactions we've had to your work in the store have been over the large paintings that are part of the memory series. And I know that's not what you called it. Um, what did you use for source images for some of those paintings? Or how did you find yourself putting the work together? Because I, I know you as a mixed media artist yeah. in terms of layering and collage. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to know what where, where you pulled from for the series. I have, I have a collection of home movies from the 60s and 70s. That, of your own family. Of my own family. So I inherited that from my mom. My mom passed away in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and when my sisters and I and the family, we were all going through all her stuff, you know, like everybody does when this happens, is you got albums and albums of old photographs that go back to my grandmother, you know, so I've got, I had, we were all just like, what do we do with these older albums um, that we no longer know who these people are? You know, they're from yeah. the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. So I know my mother, I know my grandmother. And, but then it, but beyond that, I don't know who the people are anymore. And I just kind of find that really fascinating and interesting. Um, so I, I decided to keep all those books and I took the home movies. They were super eight home movies. Um, oh. And I got the old projector going and, and figured out and then got it transferred to DVD. And then I just started taking stills from those home movies. And that's a lot of the reference um, work that is that I made paintings from. I decided to make paintings from these stills, um, the home movies and also the, the photo albums. Um, my mother at a young age from, I guess about four, age 14 to age 20, she was very much into photography um, oh. before she shifted into architecture. So she has these albums of beautiful black and white photos of her days, you know, as a young woman um, coming of age. And I just find that to be very interesting as I have three daughters coming of age. I, you know, I am one of six sisters and so this lineage of mother daughter was something that was is continues to be very interesting to me. And so that's where I was pulling my inspiration from for um, those paintings that really have is kind of ongoing. I'll, I think I'll always be going back to that. I have lots of paintings in my studio mm -hmm. um, that use those photographs. And then I kind of go off away from the photographs as well. Like sometimes I'm very literal with the photograph. Um, but I do tend to blur it and layer on top and incorporate collage or seemingly collage looking elements in just using paint, but still kind of collage looking. And um, yeah, that's, that's a, something that's always inspiring to me. Uh, do you find yourself um, influenced by your mother being an architect and correct me if I'm wrong, but your father was also an architect? Yeah. My father is an architect. They Art met, architecture school, um, McGill University in Montreal. Okay. They were both studying there. Um, they were in their five-year program and um, that's where they met. And so my mother actually never did practice it formally because she had seven children. And so she was home while my father was the one who really took off and became the architect. Um, although she did always uh, support him and was involved as much as she could with a, you know, with the house full of kids, she did do um, drawings and made scale models was the big thing that was her. Oh, sure. Yeah, her forte was making scale models. So our house always had um, these really cool, what we thought were dollhouses, but they were, <laughs> they were definitely not dollhouses, foam core and little mini trees and 
Uh -huh. um, so she, they would, you know, that would always be around that and drafting tables and all the equipment that goes with architecture. Uh, my father had like a home office set up that uh, was right in our TV room. And so he was always like, you know, erasing and drawing. And drafting. Yeah, yeah. So that's how yeah. I was my work. So you have been busy with work. I know from having taken some classes with you last summer, you were preparing for a show at the Duxbury Art Center. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, that was delayed. So can you share with the, the thinking and the process that went into that and how the show changed from when it was scheduled to when it was installed in Duxbury? Yeah. Um, so I was invited about three years ago now to have a solo exhibit at the Duxbury Art Complex Museum. And, um, and then COVID happened. Um, and at the time I was going to be showing uh, some of the works that you have in your space, mm -hmm. in the drawing room now. Um, and that's part of a series of work that was based off of um, old family photographs and oh, yeah. and home movies. And um, that was the work that I was doing at the time. And then COVID happened and the show got pushed off a whole year. So in that year, while we were all in our quarantines, um, I happened to get the opportunity to be quarantined in an awesome studio space, which... <laughs> Um, happens to be where my husband works at the YMCA. So I had this huge building, like a gymnasium sized building that was not being used throughout COVID. So I got to set up in there, decided to just start working on a whole other body of work that ended up being in the show for Duxbury because not only did I have one year extra, I got another year. So it was pushed off two years. Um, and in the course of the two years, the work that I made was just in reaction to everything that was going on with the politics, um, the elections, and most specifically, my becoming an American citizen um, oh, during right. those two years. So in 2020, I became American. I'm Canadian born. Um, even though I've lived here in um, Sandwich, I live in Sandwich, um, but I've lived on the Cape for 25 years, but I never did apply for my citizenship. Um, that finally happened um, during COVID because my green card was stolen while I was traveling just before COVID and I wasn't allowed back into the country. Uh -oh. So I put the wheels in motion for a whole new set of work um, that kind of became politically inspired. No, not kind of. It was entirely politically inspired. Um, so that's the whole new direction that my current work um, took and is still kind of going right now. And that show in Duxbury was earlier this year, but you currently have a show at the Katuit Art Center. The Duxbury show was in the spring. And then I had a month break. Mm -hmm. The Katuit show, which had originally been scheduled out a whole year after, mm -hmm. you know, was now back to back. So it was kind of like I decided to show similar work. Um, so the two shows um, with both the same theme, I have new paintings and a new digital body of work that I also was playing around with during COVID. And that's at Katuit Center for the Arts that it wasn't at the Duxbury show. Okay, so it's a that's little bit different. And that's actually the show that's closing this weekend. I hope to um, get there before it ends. Yeah, if you can get there, that would be great. It does close on September 11th. Um, and I will be giving an artist talk on September 10th at 4 o'clock. Oh, that's perfect. In the gallery. You also teach in addition to um, creating your own artwork. What What's your split in terms of timing or does it vary? It varies. I mean, pre-COVID, I was teaching maybe only 20% of my time was in teaching. The rest of the time in my studio. Mm -hmm. um, and then during COVID, I was 100% studio. I wasn't teaching at all. Right. Um, and I've only just started up again with teaching. Um, so I have a few classes on the horizon for the fall. Um, I also do weekend, one day weekend workshops. Mm -hmm. Um, on the Cape, you know, tend to be out at Katuit Center for the Arts and also the Cape Cod Arts Association. Um, and, um, and then I do also community projects. So that, that actually has taken off since COVID. There seems to be a high demand for um, community arts in the form of murals. And since I have a background in mural painting, 
Um, that all just kind of happened very um, fluidly, wasn't really looking for it, but um, there was suddenly this need and I'm interested in community development and community art making. And um, so now I find my schedule is more about that kind of work and less about teaching. Yeah. Are you working collaboratively on your murals or? Um, are you? I have some that are where I'm the lead muralist. Um, and then I have another one at Barnes School High School. I'm working with my old mural painting partner, Chris Riverdi. Oh, Chris, yeah. Yeah, Chris and I are working again. Um, and we're working on murals in um, Barnes School High School's cafeteria. And we hope that's launching. It just launched this summer and we'll... Um, hopefully take off during the school year. We'll, we'll have kids involved in painting. Uh, high school students will do the painting. Mm -hmm. uh, we got in there and got started painting a mural so they could see something changed over the summer. Um, and these are designed to be like murals that are addressing the issues that they're all facing around you know, wanting to feel um, included and, you know, tackling subjects of diversity and inclusion and, uh, you know, the whole gamut, whatever it is, we, we're sort of hoping to get ideas from them. Um, just a way to make, to give them an opportunity to, for connection is really what I'm noticing a lot of the high schools are missing. COVID really just kind of changed that environment for them. And there's a huge need right now for the, for, uh, the staff and the kids to find something to bond over um, so yeah, the muraling is a great sort of vehicle for that to happen. And I'm quite and, happy to be doing that. Uh, is that, is that muraling happening interior or exterior? Um, interior, so far interior. I did do an exterior mural project, um, during COVID with the League of Women Voters that was outside, um, to promote voting. Uh, so we had a, like a community event day when people came out and painted on this mural that I had designed and outlined and the community came in and basically painted in between the lines. <laughs> Almost paint by number. It's paint by numbers. It really was entirely paint by numbers, oh, uh, but it made it so that a mural could come together in a day um, and people coming together. It's just fabulous. It's just a, a really great uh, way to get people talking side by side that normally are never together in conversation. So um, that's, that's been a really lovely outcome. Um, from the sadness of all the pandemic nonsense that we've been living. So, Jackie, I've enjoyed our conversation this afternoon. I'm looking forward to seeing the show at the Katuit and hosting you in New Bedford at some point in the future. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I wish you luck with the rest of the summer. And I hope to see you on this side of the bridge Yes. Actually, your artist talk is on the 10th. Yes. September 10th, four o'clock in the gallery at Katuit Center for the Arts. What's the tagline? Do it at Katuit? Do it at Katuit. <laughs> I didn't come up with that. <laughs>